in Chile at the international airport. So if you hear planes in the background, <laughs> that's why we have to catch a flight relatively soon, but we wanted to spend some time looking back at Whitewash before we do that. We've done a few backpacking trips before and a lot of hikes. Yeah, just really just mostly day hikes. So we weren't that prepared in turn in terms <laughs> of packing tent, bringing food, preparing food. For a for, 10 day trek. For a 10 day trek. And there's really a difference between how much you eat during an afternoon or uh, an entire day to what you eat in 10 days. Even though this was our first uh, week long hike, I feel like we spent quite a good amount of time researching it and um, it went pretty well for us. So ultimately in this video, It'll be our experience, but it'll also be a lot of information for anyone who's looking to do the five wash trek. Our travels led us to the city of Juaraz. Juaraz is an outdoor recreational hub in Peru. There are many activities in the area, and it also acts as a home base for completing the Huayhuay Huay circuit. Fortunately, we were able to hop on this tour bus, a guided tour bus, and catch a ride. So that was really, really nice. Originally, we were planning on camping here for a night, but we got here early enough where I think that we will go on. It's 10 30, so I think we might as well just finish on. I'm feeling ready to hike. Hopefully, it doesn't rain too much today. <laughs> made it to camp. We actually then end up staying at Quetta Lane, which is where the bus drops you off. We got there at like 11 or so, so we decided to hike on along with everyone else um, to the first, second campsite. We got there thinking that we were gonna sleep right by the lake, but it is prohibited. You're pretty pretty <laughs> So <laughs> us and everyone else here, are camping at the nearest campground called Yanka, I think. Yanka. So it was a hard day. We realized that we overpacked our backpacks and at least we have so much food. I don't think yeah. we have too much stuff and tools and clothing, but food just weighs so, so much. much. And we took extra precautions. I made dinner bags. So tonight we'll have minestrone but I think our snacks are a little excessive. <laughs> we will not be losing any calories on this trek, that's for sure. <laughs> so we packed around enough food for 10 days, but found out that based on our route, we'd probably complete the trek in eight days instead. So provided we needed around 4,000 calories a day while hiking, we packed in total 40,000 calories plus emergency meals. Some of the food we packed sounded great while preparing for the trek, but on the trail, we did not have the appetite for it. So this is just a reminder to bring your favorite high calorie snacks and foods. Right now it's blue skies, but we still don't have sun on the campground. And being able to only wear a sun hoodie It's actually kind of nice to have a little bit of peace and quiet before we head out. Saying goodbye to these beautiful mountains. We have not reached the pass yet. We've come to an unplanned turtle stop. And this turtle does not know how to get up.
before we started the trek, we stopped for breakfast in a small town, and we saw a man in a suit. <laughs> Every backpacker should have a suit. We made it to camp two and now we're starting to make some food. Today was way easier. It was more moderate just because the distance was further. So same amount of altitude gain but yeah, it's less intense. Much less intense. Tomorrow's not gonna be the three legs. Yes. I think that's gonna be more intense than what we've done so far. Yeah. Which is also okay now that our backpacks weigh a little less. We're still pounding food in hopes to lessen our weight here. But tomorrow's a long day. It's a really nice excuse to have as many RAs as you want. <laughs> so we'll hit the hay hit the hay early. And all of those horses. All the donkeys. <laughs> Today we started around 9. We woke up at 7 and then made it out at 9. 6, 15, some of us. Um, but I think today or tomorrow we'll leave around 8. We like to wait until the sun hits. It's really a difference between sunny and warm and not sunny and cold. We're thinking that we're going to go up in the waters here too. but. Then the sun disappeared. It's just cold. Yeah. So bird bath and then <laughs> food and we'll go to bed. Good night. If the Woiwush trek had been at sea level, the daily hike would probably have varied between being moderate and hard difficulties. However, now that we're at 4,000 meters, this makes the trek so much harder. If you book a tour, you'll only need to carry a day pack. We'll talk more on the differences between guided tours and independent trekking later on. As for acclimatization though, we recommend spending time in Cusco for a few days. This is what we did and we highly recommend it. We had ample time to prepare for the elevation of whitewash as we visited Peru's Machu Picchu and Reba Mountain before the trek. However, you can also acclimatize in Juarez, which is the main trekking hub in the area. Here you could do the Laguna 69 trek or the Santa Cruz trek or some of the other treks in the area. Also, with regards to altitude, everyone responds differently, but it's definitely better to be prepared for altitude sickness. We'd pack Diamox, which was pretty fortunate because we couldn't purchase Diamox over the counter in Peru. If you prefer a natural approach, coca leaves are the locals' go to, and they're available throughout Peru. We have made it past two of the three lagunas and we're about to start our ascent. This is where we're heading. Not entirely sure where the path goes, but it's up. It's up. <laughs> you can kind of see the trail there, but just migrated all the way up here. It was a stair climber, and we have yet to reach the pass. We chose to go over Ciudad Pass, the trek by the Three Lagunas, and in my opinion this is probably one of the most beautiful and iconic days in the trek. This is also the route that most tourists do. Another option would be trekking through a valley pass which is supposedly slightly easier, 
but both options at, at the whitewash campsite. <laughs> that was killer. Paso. Zumba. <laughs> These are worth it. <laughs> Day three, cut my lip, it's cold. We're exhausted from yesterday. And we have another just as hard or harder pass to hike. And it's 8.20, we got in in the dark last night or during sunset, I guess, which was, just a tad later than we'd want that to cook in the dark. And I think we're on the same timeline as that right now. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. If we can get out of here in an hour or so. We took Trapecio Pass from the campsite. Another option is to camp at the hot springs. Many tourists take the ladder, and this will add a day to the trek. But this day can be made up later. Just stop for a quick break um, after gaining, I don't know, X amount of meters. <laughs> There is the trail that leads to the hot springs. Wah, wah, wah. Not everyone is happy. Yeah. He's talking about me. But we're view seeking, so hopefully you can seek and you shall find. Hmm? We decided to hike Trapezio Pass, which is part of the Alpine Circuit bypasses the hot springs. The route is non-technical and pretty easy to follow. However, initially finding the trail itself can be a bit tricky. We made it! Now we're going to begin our descent. Hopefully quickly because up there those clouds look nice, but everyone you what you can't see is just gray coverage. In other words, we've made it. Temple Levante. I pee in this river. There could be. Is that what you want? <laughs> Morning five at Camp Elefante. Today we're heading over Santa Rosa's Pass as opposed to San Antonio's just to try to avoid some crowds. Um, and then we'll sleep on the other side, so it's not a long day. Um, we're opting not to go to the base camp. So today, only about 600 meter 
elevation gain. Was it really 600 meters? Because that's almost as much as yesterday. Just... Yeah, I think it's 600 meters. Mm, it's tough. <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be a tough day, but um, not as far as distance goes. So our spirits are here. I think we're losing motivation to getting up early and getting out. So now we're just waiting for the sun to heat up the tent. Like on previous days, you have options for trekking on this day. We took Santa Rosa Pass. You may decide to hike San Antonio Pass instead. Not all tours complete these passes, but the tours that do typically take San Antonio. There's also the possibility to hike to Siula Base Camp. This route has an additional 500 meter gain and may add a day to your itinerary. From Camp Elefante, you can also bypass the passes and base camp altogether and begin a slow descent through the valley to the village of Huayapa. This is the quickest route, but we really enjoyed the views over the passes. We have made it to Camp Kutatumbo uh, here on our fifth day. We took Santa Rosa's Pass instead of San Antonio's Pass and supposedly the descent was easier. <laughs> I don't know, cannot confirm nor deny, but it was pretty steep coming down. <laughs> we decided not to go up to the uh, base camp, so we're happy to be here early and relaxing. Ahead of us is just a long valley walk and then maybe going up to the end. The Hoi circuit passes through community lands and the locals maintain the campsites and trails. Most campsites have a fee and this adds up to about 220 solas per person. It's a fairly short day. What? Five hours? I have no clue what day it is. Six? I said five yesterday. But it was fairly, fairly mild and clean. Yeah, I don't. It wasn't bad. I think because we didn't start our hike from the town. directly to camp. If you stay left, you'll walk along the ridge line. We hugged this ridge line and really recommend it as you get a full view of the White Bush Range. Be warned though, as the descent from the ridge is ridiculously steep.
and we're headed to Yamak. And see if we can catch a bus. Hey, there's, it's 7:45, and they're supposed to leave at 10. It's an 11-ish. <laughs> yeah. But we didn't want to get up at four, so maybe we'll look out. Yeah. Yeah. This is our view. The sun just rose in the mountains, so. We're getting some heat now. And the ice frost is beginning to melt on the tent. From here, it's all downhill. <laughs> no more chaplets. We still have about four and a half kilometers down. It should be easy peasy. And then we'll see what happens when we get to town. <laughs> Maybe by chance there's a collectivo or something in the afternoon. We'll see. Power drive. Dark to support us if there is a bus. Otherwise, it'll be in the morning at some point. Early. Fortunately, there's a hostel here, <laughs> and we met the the lady there. Worst case, we have a place to stay and a warm shower or a shower. <laughs> and for now, we are making lunch. So we did not catch an Aspen bus. 10 a.m. seems to be the cutoff for tour buses, and collectivos typically stop driving through around noon. Luckily, Yamak does have a couple of hostels. We stayed and caught a bus the next morning. In general, when we were looking, trying to prepare for the trip, Googling, YouTube, any videos, or just people telling how this whitewash trek was and we really didn't find very much. We learned a lot from the tour agencies but we didn't see any videos that gave information. Hence, yeah. hence why we're doing this. <laughs> maybe this can help someone. Yeah. <laughs> maybe so a vi helped us. we're helping the visual learners out there. <laughs> the tour groups are so luxurious <laughs> for backpacking at least. Everything's taken care of. You're, it's like having a crew. You have people who are setting up your tents, breaking down your tents, laying out your sleeping bags, cooking your food, taking uh, boiling water for you, carrying your bags if you absolutely need it. And they have extra horses in case someone gets injured or you need to be horsed out. <laughs> it looked really nice from the outside. If you just want to see Boy Boy, then it could be a good option. And it's not a leisurely stroll anyway. Right, it's a difficult hike every single day, but I do think, I mean, if you're relatively active and you've gone hiking before and backpacking before, you, you can do quite wash. Yeah. Um, the tour groups typically leave at 7 a.m. We really enjoyed being able to wait until the tours got way ahead of us so that right. we could have the trail to ourselves. I guess that's the main luxury of doing it by yourself instead of doing a tour and stuff and sort of just do what you want. Um... Most of the tour groups, you, you have your set days, you have your set route, and that's that. So we enjoy being like, oh, well, let's do Trapecio Pass instead of yeah, That's you can change from day to day. Yeah, and I was a little worried with the knee injury. So that was really nice being able to touch base with my body and see like what I could handle or what I wanted to handle. Pond is just the backpack weight. I mean, it's going to be tough the first few days. 
you do want to do some lunges with some yeah. weight on it if you're doing it independently because it's a lot. I don't think we were hit that much by the altitude. We had been in Cusco for, mm. I don't know, two, three weeks before that. That's but, another story. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's 3,300 meters. Why was, I can't remember, is it four and a half thousand? Base would be 4,000 meters and yeah. then going up to 5,000. You can feel the altitude, but if you're if you've been in Juarez or you've been in Cusco or something beforehand, then it worked out for us at least. Yeah, um, I think as far as altitude goes, um, it wasn't awful, but you everyone handles altitude differently, um, and you really just want to make sure that you are taking care of yourself before you start the trek, because once you're out there, it's tough going back. I think this is one of my favorite hikes. Yeah. treks that I've done and if you're contemplating it do it also on another note <laughs> it's way better than Santa Cruz <laughs> it's just much more grand you really feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, nowhere yeah. whereas our experience with Santa Cruz we were walking through a valley most of the time there was one pass whereas here there there's a pass each day which is really beautiful and a highlight of each day also makes it that much tougher. I would say it would be more worth it to do like four days of the whitewash circuit versus the four day Santa Cruz trip. Yeah, maybe. You could probably do uh, starting at the first campsite, quarter lane, and then going until the village and then get transported home from the village, something like that, if you only have a set number of days. Yeah, that would be, what, five, five days? Something like that. I'd rather yeah. do that than Santa Cruz. That'll give you a wonderful view of what the Cordilleras are all about. <laughs> what else? Got a touch. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> In general, I think we had a great time, and we highly recommend it to everyone. And if you're still watching this, at this point, thanks for being so dedicated. <laughs> yeah. And if we're related, then... <laughs> thanks, Mom. <laughs> I don't know if we'll make any other videos like this. If we're doing another hiking video, it could be in Patagonia. Honestly, I have a hard time seeing that that could top Whitewash, uh, but it could be comparable in terms of grand experiences. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> I'm sure that when you piece this together, you're gonna miss a piece where we're actually saying goodbye to people or where we're saying how shitty where we really was.